Do you find that conducting clinical trials outside the U.S., at least your earlier trials, uh, is easier, or brings the data forward faster, um, is, is more efficient from a pricing standpoint, <laughs> the cost? Uh, currently, we have eight. We're in the clinic in eight different disease areas. And it's hard to apply a cookie cutter approach to the whole list. There are certain indications where, for example, we prefer to go into phase one in Australia. Mm -hmm. And only after we go through the preliminary safety studies, uh, we ended up bringing those programs back into the US. Uh, but as far as the decision to whether to bring it back into the US or not in the long run, I don't think there is any decision to be made. We still have to bring it back into the US because uh, you know, ICH still uh, governs the world of medicine, and U.S. is still the leader in ICH. So if we don't bring a program back into the U.S., it raises some credibility issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to, build, to build on that, you, you have like what you can do you know, from a regulatory perspective and then what you can do to change standard of care. And you can actually potentially easily develop product outside the US, but then if you really want to have an impact on how medicine is practiced on the patients, you will have to bring with you the US KOLs. So at, at some point, strategically, you know, for any company that really wants to be a leader in the space, that's going to be key. Yeah. Uh, so in, in our case, uh, you know, uh, even to understand the drug, you know, understand the dose ranging study that one has to do in phase two B, sometimes it may be actually worthwhile to do a proof of concept human efficacy study outside U.S. Number one, it, it has a faster pathway to understand, and uh, number two, it gives quick and perhaps at a lesser cost, you know, the study. But you know, in in the U.S. approach sites, you know, to ensure quality, and then you can use that data to actually effectively design your. U.S. phase to be so. In that sense, having that approach, you know, can can be faster, and can also be cost effective. And I guess in our case, you know, we have a couple of considerations. One, if you're dealing with gene therapy, you really want to be dealing with top centers in the world that really know how to deal with gene therapy. So that's a primary consideration. For example, UCLA here or. Boston Children's Hospital or Great Ormond Street in London, these are sort of places that we want to do the trial work. And then, of course, if you're dealing with rare diseases, you also need to have mm -hmm. sort of specialized centers that you, where you can access sufficient patients. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the two key considerations. So it tends to be global.